welcome. So this is a um, projectile motion problem. We have a motion in, in two axes, uh, X and Y plane, typically horizontal and vertical, you can say. And this says a cannonball is fired with a muzzle speed of four meters per second horizontally off a cliff. So let's draw this. And boom, boom, boom. Here's the four meters per second. And if it takes three seconds for the cannonball to hit the sea below, so here's the path taken by the cannonball parabolic path. And it says, what is the height of the cliff? So I want to find height of the cliff. This is a similar setup to a previous problem. And I want to show you just how, by just changing a couple of things, it's a completely different problem. There's so many different questions I can get out of one physical situation uh, that you've really got to learn the approach rather than the actual problem. I'm never going to ask you this problem on a test and, and your teachers will not ask you problems that typically you've seen. Uh, they'll use the same skills, but not the same problem. So we want to find this height. It's a vertical information. So again, we say find vert info from. vert info. If what you're looking for is a vertical piece of information, look to the vertical pieces of information that you have. And what do we have? Well, we know that our VI vertically equals zero meters per second. Now I know it's traveling at four meters per second horizontally, but that is at 90 degrees from the vertical axis. And what we'll find time and time again is that when axes are at 90 degrees to each other, we call them orthogonal. They are independent of each other. And so that horizontal motion, uh, uh, the fact that it is horizontal means that we have a zero meter per second vertical uh, 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 velocity. It's like a person or a cannonball simply been dropped off a cliff vertically. So my horizontal my horizontal initial velocity is zero meters per second. I am starting here and I am ending here. So vertically I'm looking down here. And what I say is that my acceleration, well my acceleration vertically equals minus 10 meters per second squared there is a force acting on this cannonball vertically it's the force of gravity and that is a vertical force and that causes a horizontal uh, i'm sorry that causes a vertical acceleration so it's going to be a, a downwards acceleration of 10 meters per second squared which is minus 10 meters per second squared as far as our, our bookkeeping is concerned. And then we know that the time is equal to three seconds. And we want to find our displacement. We'll find displacement and we'll interpret that in terms of our height of the cliff. Please notice we don't know that the final velocity vertically is zero meters per second because it isn't. Even though the cannonball will eventually stop moving, it eventually stops moving because it hits the water and then it has a resistance force and its velocity is reduced to zero. And that reduction of its velocity to zero is a completely different problem. All we can talk about with, with projectile motion and, a, and a, a kinematic equation is a period of time when there's only the force of gravity acting on the object and uh, uh, the acceleration caused by that velocity, uh, caused by that force is constant. These equations are constant acceleration equations. So while you're being fired, that's a different journey. Once you've touched something at the end, that's a different journey. I can only talk about what's in between and your 
vertical component of velocity is certainly not zero when you're touching the water. What be just the instant before you touch the water? It's really quite a, a, a high uh, a negative velocity. So we don't know that it's zero. We don't know what it is, but we don't know that it's zero. So now I look for an equation that links my initial velocity vertically, my acceleration vertically, my time, and my displacement vertically. And the equation that comes to mind is delta x is equal to vi delta t plus one half a delta t squared. So delta x is equal to zero times three plus one half times minus 10 times three squared. So delta x is equal to zero plus minus uh, three threes are nine, five nines are 45, minus 45. So my delta x is equal to minus 45 meters. That is my displacement during my journey. I, I go 45 meters in the negative direction from the start of my journey to the end vertically. And that means that the height of the cliff h must equal, the height of the cliff is just a, a scalar value it's 45 meters. So there's a little bit of uh, uh, interpretation at the end. It's, it's the same numerical value. It's just these equations give you displacement and the question asks for the height of the cliff. So the question is, are they the same numerical value? And in this case, they are. So there we have it. Our question, is, our answer is E. And uh, that's the question. Thank you.